Welcome to the first exhibition race of the 2014 PCC Cup Series season. Nicholas Cordovos has qualified on the pole here at the Hidden Valley Racetrack in Darwin, Australia. And as you can see at the bottom, we've got the starting lineup cycling through for you as well. There are 14 turns on this track, and uh, quite a few Australians have actually turned up. Uh, Josh Worth there in the number 62, and the Gold Coast Motorsports cars, which occupy row number 6. Uh, row number seven also occupied by Australians, so there are quite a few in the field here today that have qualified quite well. As we look back, there's Tom Wilson, one of the newest uh, rookies in the field. Row 10 occupied by quite a few rookies. Uh, as we continue to cycle through the field on the bottom there, uh, this season looks to be very promising as uh, the entry list for this race filled up very fast. Uh, there were uh, no spots open only uh, something about an hour or two after they put up the entry list. So this will be very interesting to see as some of these teams we have never seen before on the track and they simply just jumped at an opportunity to get on the track to get some testing here before the actual season begins. As we cycle through to the back of the field you see Kenny Steffens back there and the number 45, Kel Bernfart Jr. Les Jackson had some problems with that car with the handling and qualifying and was unable to set a very fast lap. Now Nicholas Cordova leads the field to the green flag here at Hidden Valley as he heads down this long straightaway into turn number one. He's got Gaspar D'Souza on his outside and he's going to clear him. Headed into the sweeping left hand turn and Clara Kindle is going to follow through on the inside there. We've got two wide all the way back through the back of the field and Nicholas Cordova starts to open up a gap as so does Clara Kindle now. Now the top five, six have now strung out single file as they head down here and Cordova's is definitely opening up a gap here now as uh, there is some trouble back in the pack. We're going on board Alina Lazareva in the number 59 car. This is her first start with uh, the Griffith Motorsports team. Oh, she drives off a bit, uh, gets it back going, loses a couple spots, but oh, what a dive bomb. She holds onto it and gets by six or seven cars there in that turn. Now Nicholas Cordova has opened up a gap over uh, Clara Kindle. Now this is lap number two as uh, the 39 car has just opened up a huge lead now over all of these cars. Most of the drivers have gone single file now. As we go back through the field, there's a bit of uh, dust kicked up there from where Lazareva drove off. As we go back into the field, here are uh, Dylan Kirk and Ryan Torrens who are running 11th and 12th here on the first two laps. These are ex-Barton Sandy cars after that operation shut down. Uh, Barton Sandy was not uh, entered into this race, but these two cars were. Uh, these were his former cars that were entered by a team called Gold Coast Motorsports, uh, based out of Australia. Here is, uh, this is Les Jackson in the number 11 car, driving for Johnson Racing in this one-off appearance. Uh, they gave him a ride in their fifth car, because uh, the Bad Boy Rally team didn't have a spare car for him. Uh, he had some handling trouble and qualified near the back, but he's slowly been working his way up through the field. He's currently 36th on uh, lap number three here, struggling to get around Nick Azure in the number 46 Doritos car. In last place right now is Kenny Steffens in number 45. Some of you may remember he was in a vicious accident at Dwyer in 2011. Good to see him back. He has recovered fully, uh, but uh, he's still not very fast. Here is Claire Aussier who lost the championship last season in the final race at Cleveland uh, after suffering some mechanical problems on that car. Uh, she's got a new ride now in this zero car, same team, just different number, and uh, she is doing an excellent job so far. She's running in seventh place with that amazing looking paint scheme that Superstar Energy number zero Mercedes-Benz is performing quite well here today as she's got the Winslow Motorsports cars in front of her. Now, Nicholas Cordovos has opened up a lead uh, even more over Clara Kindall. Now, Clara Kindall in that one car, she's moved over to the one from the 14 last year. Uh, actually, all of the Manticore cars have changed numbers, but Nicholas Corridovos is doing one heck of a job at the front of the field. He is just setting a blistering pace, and uh, it, it won't be long before he runs into some lapped cars. Uh, going back to look at Clara Kindle now, in second place, she is starting to catch just a little bit. Uh, this is on lap number 10 of 50. As you can see there, there's some lap traffic already. Uh, up in the distance as now 
she really starts to close the gap. Clara Kendall developed a habit as a crasher last season, but uh, shook that off by getting a few wins and becoming a championship contender late in the going. Now on board with uh, the 39 car as he's caught Kenny Steffens at the back of the field. Uh, most of the Steffens racing cars have not been up to snuff on the road courses here, uh, as most of them, well, you can see three of them right there, three of the four. Uh, actually, Chris Benson, surprisingly, is the fastest of the three. Uh, four, excuse me. Uh, I'm not used to seeing Steffens Racing having four cars. They've got the 45, six, uh, 55, 65, and 75 this year, as now Cordova's peaks on the inside of the 75 of Preston Bell. Bell shuts the door. New sponsor on that car. He's sponsored by Pepsi this year instead of Mr. Good Sense, as he has been for the past two years. Here is Sylvia Rinaldi as... Uh, well, she gets into the back of Joe Craig, doesn't take too kindly being shoved off there, gets into the back of him, and does a bit of hood damage uh, to that number two car. Uh, Silvia Rinaldi, the Italian, getting a break in that number two car for the season. She's impressed that team quite a bit in some of the lower series. Now, here is uh, Clara Kindle, who has caught Nicholas Corradovos. Corradovos has been impeded by Barry Juvenal for the past few laps. And, uh, well, Juveno not exactly known for being the best back marker, as is Cale Burnfart Jr., who is right behind Kindall right now. As Cordova sneaks by the inside of Juveno there, and now it looks like Kindall's going to have to deal with him. Uh, Kindall definitely taking her time, as uh, she's not quite sure where Juveno's going to go. As Juveno cuts her off, throws the block once again, and third time, and fourth time there. So uh, very juvenile. You can see all that time that she lost there. Here's Greg Maddox in the number 78 car, throwing that car around. And he is currently running in the sixth position. There's a big battle up here for third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. And you can see back there, Gabriel Messina threw it off there in that number uh, 999 car. Uh, so did Jer uh, so did Josh Worth, excuse me, in that number 62 car, driving for the Bad Boy Rally Team. Here is Silvia Rinaldi once again, riding behind Cody Deek in that number 31 car. Uh, Rinaldi hasn't pit to get that damage repaired yet. Oh, she gets into the rear quarter panel, and she spins Cody Deek, and she goes off herself in the final turn. And, uh, well, that car, I think it's going to be pretty much done. Uh, she would hit the wall and retire from the race. Here's Gaspar D'Souza, runs it wide, uh, swinging it back on track. Oh, there's Gabriel Messina, and he gets into him, and there's a three-car wreck on that uh, stretch there. You've got uh, D'Souza, Messina, and Durbin. Oh, Ryan Torrens piles in and hits the back of Messina there. And, oh, there's some beating and banging there between a couple of cars. See right there, he uh, got into Messina, thinking Messina's at fault. And, oh, uh, well, Lazareva just kind of sweeped in there and took uh, herself out, pretty much. So, Ike Durbin now colliding with uh, D'Souza. Some arguments going on over the driver's radios, for sure. Some definite tensions heating up there between the drivers here on lap number 16. Here's Clara Kendall, who has definitely caught uh, Nicholas Corridovos now. She sweeps to the outside trying to get around uh, Nick Azure there. Uh, he finished in the top five in uh, PCC Lights Points last season and got this big break as the driver of the number 46 car. And now Nicholas Corridovos has gotten around him. Uh, looks like Kendall's going to sweep to the outside and try and make the pass there on Azure, and I think I think she's going to be able to do it, as you see there, uh, Ike Durbin is coming out of the pits in that number four car. He's driving for himself in this race when Great Lakes Motorsports was unable to secure an entry. Now, here is Les Jackson in this number 11 car. He's managed to work his way up to uh, 30th place by lap 18, but he's about to go a lap down now. Uh, little surprised to see him struggling so much in this number 11 car. He looked so good at Cleveland in that number 63 Bad Boy Rally Team car, as uh, looks like Josh Worth has transferred all the speed that they had to that car into um, his, as he's currently running in the top 10 right now. But Les Jackson, one of the hometown heroes, getting ready to go a lap down here on lap number 17, as you see that Clara Kendall has definitely closed up the gap, and she is right on the back bumper. 
here we go. This is lap number 19. As you can see, that Corridovos is just struggling to get around Les Jackson there. Continuing to ride on board. Oh, Kindle takes a peek on the inside as they go over that bump. Uh, is she going to be able to do anything with it? Let's see here. Cordova swings wide, opens the door. Jackson throws the block on him. And uh, let's see here. No, she's not going to make anything of it, though Jackson slides wide there. One of the biggest changes in the offseason was, oh, Josh Worth throwing it a bit wide there in that number 62 car, was Brian Gallagher to Griffith Motorsports in this number 49 Cassive, and he brought on board some sponsorship from the new Pokemon game, Pokemon Z. And that car, uh, it looks, uh, quite frankly, it doesn't look too good, but uh, he's doing a heck of a job with that car. He's got that car running in the top five here on lap number 21 as he just lapped Kale Bernfart Jr. You've got Greg Maddox right in front of him dealing with the lapped car of Barry Juvenal. Uh, Barry Juvenal, the notoriously bad back marker. Clara Kendall now, I think she's going to try and give it another shot. Trying to get around Nicholas Corridovos here as he's been held up by Josh Marshall and Robert Nelson. As, uh, oh, he drives the corner a bit wide. I think he might open the door here and, uh, oh, she's running him wide and he does. Corridovos opens the door and now Clara Kendall is going to take the lead from Nicholas Corridovos coming down the long straight. And I think she can use the draft. She will indeed lead this lap. And yes, she does. Clara Kendall now has taken the lead on lap number 22 of 50 over Nicholas Cordovos as she sets forth on trying to lap Josh Marshall and Robert Nelson. Here is the best running Australian in the field, uh, Dylan Kirk in this number 57 car. This is an ex Barton Sandy car, as I mentioned before, fielded by Gold Coast Motorsports. Uh, according to this team, we're not really expected to see them uh, at any other races so far this season. I don't even think they're going to be entering uh, any of the European races or anything like that. They're here simply for the fans. I think they might show up at Suzuka, but that is uh, something we'll have to see in the future. But this car is running in sixth place, doing a fantastic job. Here is the zero car of Claire Aussier, who is catching the number 39 car now, uh, nearing the halfway distance, as it looks like the 39 car has started to fall off, as he can't quite work his way through lap traffic as well as some of these other cars. Uh, either that or his long run uh, speed is just uh, kind of in the question. Uh, the tires on that car, they're running Bridgestones, and those aren't quite the best tires for the long run. But it looks like Aussie is going to use the 12 car as a pick. And, oh, he slides it a bit wide. And I think Aussie is going to get the position here on the 39 car as he does so. Uh, as the 39 car threw it a bit wide. But Aussier, she takes the lead as there's a car off way in the back. I think that's Greg Max. Yeah, we're going to get a look here as he's racing with Brian Gallagher for the fifth position. He just throws it way off, way off track into the dirt. Uh, he's going to pull that car back out on track. And ooh, he just nicked that tire wall there, trying to get back on track. And that car is uh, slowing, definitely. Something is not quite right with that as now he's lost all that time. He's going to bring that car into the pits as now Lazareva goes off. She got some rear end damage from somewhere. And Greg Max is going to pit that car and get that damage repaired on that number 78 Inglesby. Here is the number 34 car of Andy Lambert. He has uh, he's done quite a good job so far this season. This team looks like they've put it on the turnaround ROG Motorsports. Last season was an absolute disaster for them. Neither of the cars made too many races, even though they had Lambert, who won the championship back in 2011. He is running in 15th right now, and uh, I think that's it for position in front of him. Denny Adams having a strong run as well, as well as Alex Pawlington there in the Team Canada Racing number 00. Surprised to see them here. Here's Ryan Jeffries, who is currently running in the 24th position. He's about to go a lap down now to Clara Kendall, but you can see Claire Aussie back there slowly working her way up towards uh, towards Kendall, her teammate, as Robert Nelson is hanging there as the first car one lap down. He drives it off, but now Claire Aussie is definitely going to take advantage of this here as now Aussie is slowly but surely getting closer to Kendall 
As you can see there, Kendall is struggling with dealing with getting around Ryan Jeffries. And uh, you can see that uh, Ausie has gotten so close to Kendall there, but I think she's holding back. She's going to let Kendall lead this one for a bit and see if she makes a mistake, as she is known to do on many occasions last season. Here is Ike Durbin in the four car driving for himself. He just kind of throws that car off the track. Ooh, that's a really wide into the dirt. And he's going to clip the end of the pit wall, and that is going to be the day done for Ike Durbin there in that number four Wolfpack Rentals number four Dodge. Uh, tough break for him. He brought his team here so he could compete, and, uh, well, a silly mistake like that's just going to put him out of the race. There's Alex Phillips right in front of Clara Kendall, and he is about to go a lap down. He's currently running up in, uh, I think, 20th place right now, as there's Kenny Steffens getting ready to go two laps down. That car has been struggling with handling problems all day. As you can see, just a gaggle of cars right in front of the leader as Alex Phillips goes a lap down. He, was he is indeed in 20th place, I just checked. But it looks like Kendall has opened up a huge gap over the rest of the field. Here is Tom Wilson, who's in the top 10 right now. And he's diving onto the pit road on lap number 34, along with Scott Wallen and a couple other drivers back there. You saw the leader go by. And now Clara Kendall is going to do the same one lap later. She brings her car into the pits with a bunch of other cars you see there. Uh, Ausie and Corridovos both bringing their cars into the pits. Here is Josh Worth coming out of the pits. Oh, we've got some contact up in front with Chris Benson. Oh, Denny Adams piles into the back of Worth. And here's Gabriel Messina as, oh, Worth, what are you doing? He's swerving across the track. Andy Lambert's been collected in an instant. Let's see what happened to him as, what is he doing? He just pulled right into Benson with basically no regard for pit exit there. And let's see what happened to, oh, what are you doing? I don't know. I don't know what that was about, but he. I guess his sponsor wasn't. Uh, sponsor spotter wasn't paying attention. As now Messina gets bumped and thrown off the course by Ian Elias there. Uh, in that turn, uh, did they not bring their spotters to this track? As now it looks like Clara Kindle is going to uh, win the battle off of the pit road. As you see there, Corridovos and Ausie took quite a bit of time getting off of the pits. Uh, Alex Phillips, right in front, had a good enough stop to stay in front. And, oh, Scott Wallen just went over. Scott Wallen just got turned by Frank Azzaretto, and he went over, and he is in the tires off of turn number one. Let's go on board with Azzaretto and see what happened here. As it looked like, why did he just turn right into Scott Wallen? He turned straight into Wallen and hooked him and turned him over. Uh, well, this isn't for points, but I don't think you can get away with everything. And Nelson goes around now after getting in contact with Cody Deke. And Deke drives away, and now Nelson is uh, quite slow. But he's holding up two lanes and a bow. Oh, we've got a wreck with Phillips and Nelson and a bunch of other cars, I think. There's uh, Jeffries and Jackson. It looks like Jeffries just had enough of Nelson blocking, and oh, Lenny Jacobs got a piece. So did Kenny Steffens there in the number 45 car. Going to go on board Les Jackson here. This number 11 car, Ausie managed to make her way through somehow. Not quite sure how she managed to do that, but looks like Jackson took one of the hardest hits in that wreck, and that front end is all smashed up. As now he's starting to hold up. Oh, he's holding up Corridovos there. Corridovos has none of that, shoves him off the track. And uh, Jackson lets him know he's not too happy. He slams into Denny Adams trying to get his car back onto the track. And, uh, well, that's going to be the day done for Les Jackson there. Cody Deke, who is also involved, gets turned by uh, Lenny Jacobs and almost collects Claire Ausier there. I uh, think Jacobs wasn't too happy with Deke for something that happened earlier in the race and just wanted to let him know he wasn't too happy there. And here is Dylan Kirk, who is running up in the top five. And he's doing a good job. He is in fifth place here. And uh, he is doing an excellent job. He just got passed by Cameron Taylor for that uh, position for fourth place. But he is still doing a very strong job. Uh, here is Clara Kendall, who is continuing to lead. And uh, she's just opened up a huge gap over the rest of the field. And uh, she really can just cruise at this point and hope that the lap traffic behind her continues to block the leaders. There's Tom Delgado 
in front of her, and he is running in 15th place, having a strong run in that Angry Birds number 36 car. He's doing a fantastic job in that number 36 car. He brought that car here uh, to get a little more experience before running the full schedule. Here's Cameron Taylor going a bit wide trying to lap Alex Phillips, and he drives that car off the track into the dirt, and Dylan Kirk follows him. He hits the pit, uh, end of the pit lane, and uh, there's a bit of damage to that car, just like what happened to his teammate. Uh, I don't think those Winslot Motorsports cars are handling too well, and he pulls in front of Chris Benson, and Benson just dumps him. Uh, not really too much I can say about that, aside from that was kind of deserved. As here comes Alex Posington, he cuts off Posington, Posington goes on the outside, cuts him off again, and Posington just dumps him into the dirt and into the tire wall. I, uh, Cameron Taylor, just, just park it already. Uh, that's two incidents you've caused by just kind of swerving mindlessly all over the track. And Kyle McWalla in the number 12 car. He won, uh, I believe he won the championship in, T in PCC Lights last season. He breaks down on track and holds up a bunch of cars. Here is uh, Clara Kendall playing Josh Wirth in the number 62 a lap down. Uh, that car has consistently run pretty well all day, even with the damage. I believe he's still in the top 10 in that number 62 car. But Clara Kendall now starting to work her way up close to the, getting ready to lap close to the top 10. Here is the six car of Ben Worthington. He's in 23rd place in that fantastic looking number six Phoenix Warehouse car. I commend whoever painted that mobile. And uh, he is doing a fantastic job. He is quite improved uh, over his time in the series last year. And there's Nick Azure right behind him, uh, running in 24th place, doing an excellent job as well. Uh, two drivers who I did not expect to see still running at the end of this race and as high as they are right now. Here's Magenta Nelson Andrew, that is a mouthful. And she is running in 7th place, one of the highest running Australians in the field, second to Dylan Kirk. And uh, she is just doing a fantastic job here. This number 129 car completely upstaging uh, her team owner Robert Nelson who has kind of been nowhere all day. It's a little strange. Yeah, here's Tom Wilson, also punching way above his weight. And there's uh, Claire Kendall right behind him, getting ready to put him a lap down. But he's in the 10th position right now. So the strongest of the Johnson Motorsports cars, and maybe uh, their best hope on these road courses, is he is the only one who has really uh, kind of done anything all day in this, uh, in this race here from Johnson Motorsports. Now on the last lap, uh, Clara Kendall is trying, uh, trying to lap Nick Azure here, as Azure is really kind of throwing blocks on her, but I think she's going to just hang back. She throws the car a bit wide, almost loses it there, uh, throws it a bit wide, just kind of taking her time, and Clara Kendall now, oh you see Claire Aussier back there starting to make a little bit of a gain, but a little too late. As now, Clara Kendall comes down the main straight, drafting with Nick Azure, uh, pulls out, and Clara Kendall is going to win the Australian Exhibition at uh, Hidden Valley here today. Here is a good battle going on for fourth place with uh, Dylan Kirk. Kirk throws it a bit wide, trying to battle with Alina Lazareva, and he clips the end of the pit wall, and that's the end of that car. I don't suppose we're going to be seeing either of these cars at uh, Suzuka as these were the only two cars that they had purchased and he is going to round out the lead lap cars and he will finish I believe in fifth or sixth position in this X Barton Sandy car. As mentioned before, Aussie manages to finish second, Cordova's hangs on to finish third, Brian Gallagher fourth and Alina Lazareva fifth means that uh, Griffith Motorsports has finished 3-4-5 in this race. Nelson Andrew finishes a strong sixth, being the highest running Australian at the finish. Dylan Kirk fell back to seventh. My mistake on that one. Ian Elias finishes eighth. Lewis Jones, ninth. Some good showings for the Australians there. And Tom Wilson rounds out your top ten. Alex Posington, eleventh. Strong run for him. Tom Delgado, twelfth. Josh Worth overcame some collisions to finish in thirteenth. John Bracci, fourteenth. Joe Craig in 15th, Azaretto, Jacobs, Maddox, Marshall, and Alex Phillips rounds out your top 20 here at Australia.